Hello. This video teaches a broad approach to examination of the hip. In clinical practice, however, a good history will help you to focus your physical examination. It is important to recognize that patients complaining of hip pain may mean different things. Ask the patient to point to the painful area. Pain from the hip joint itself is usually felt in the groin and can radiate down the front of the thigh. Pain on the lateral aspect is usually due to trochanteric bursitis and can spread down the lateral side of the thigh. You may also need to examine the back and knee as these can present with hip pain. It is often useful to compare both sides. However, for this video, I will focus mostly on the right hip itself. For teaching purposes, I have structured the exam into inspection, palpation, range of movement, power assessment, and special tests. In this video, Kim will wear shorts. However, in the clinical setting, more exposure may be needed while at the same time covering the patient appropriately. When asked to examine the back or any part of the lower limbs, always take note of the patient's gait. Look at the mechanics for symmetry and smoothness of movement. Take note of the patient's ability to turn quickly and smoothly. Note the stance phase from heel strike to mid stance to toe off. With an antalgic or painful gait, the patient limps and the stance phase is shortened on the affected side. Look at the swing phase and stride length. If the pelvis drops on the swinging side, this indicates weakness of the hip abductors on the opposite side. Bilateral hip abductor weakness produces a waddling or Trendelenburg gait. If possible, inspect the patient while standing. Look from the front, the side, and the back, and remember to compare both sides. Look for scoliosis by assessing the alignment of the spine and the height of the shoulders. We would imagine that Kim's back is adequately exposed here. Look for exaggerated lumbar lordosis. This can be a clue to a flexion contractor of the hip joint. To understand this, imagine that I had a flexion contractor of my right hip. I would be forced to stand like this. However, to stand erect, I would arch my back and thereby increase my lumbar lordosis. Look for a pelvic tilt by inspecting or palpating for the level of the iliac crest. As an example, if the right hemipelvis is lower, this would suggest a shorter right leg or an abduction deformity of the right hip or conversely, an adduction deformity of the left hip. You should also assess for Trendelenburg sign. This is a test for weakness of the hip abductors. I would first ask him to raise the left leg off the floor. Look for any drop in the hemipelvis. If the left hemipelvis drops, this indicates weakness of the hip abductors on the right side. We would then repeat the test on the opposite leg. Also, take note of the position of the patient's feet. Internal or external posturing of the foot may suggest a rotational deformity at the hip. Inspect the patient while lying. Again, we would assume that Kim is adequately exposed. Look for scars or erythema around the area of the hip. If there are any scars, ask the patient to explain. Look as well for swelling. It is unlikely to see a hip joint effusion, but if there is massive swelling of the hip, this can present with a prominence in the area of the groin. Look as well for atrophy of the muscles, the quadriceps, the hamstrings, as well as the gluteal muscles. Look for deformity, example contractures, rotational deformities, and leg length discrepancy. We would now move on to palpation. Palpate for warmth or tenderness. Start medially. Palpate the pubic symphysis, the inguinal ligament. Palpate the anterior superior iliac spine, the iliac crest, and around to the posterior superior iliac spine, as well as over the sacroiliac joint. You can also palpate the ischial tuberosity at the seat of the pants by having the patient flex the leg to 90 degrees. Tenderness here suggests ischial gluteal bursitis. Palpate as well the greater trochanter. This is the bony prominence on the lateral aspect of the hip. Tenderness at the posterior lateral aspect suggests trochanteric bursitis. Let's look at range of movement. 
This should be assessed actively and passively. For efficiency, passive testing is performed immediately after the patient reaches maximum active movement in each direction. Check the end field when you do this. A bony end field suggests cartilaginous or bony problems within the joint. A soft end field may indicate problems with the ligaments, capsule, tendons, or muscles around the joint. Remember to compare both sides. For the purposes of this video, however, I would focus only on the right hip itself. We would first assess flexion by having Kim bring her knee to the chest. This is normally about 120 degrees. I would then passively stress the joint while assessing the end feel. Internal and external rotation can be done with the hip and knee flexed at 90 degrees. Bring your foot out. This is internal rotation of the hip and normally about 35 to 40 degrees. This is often the first movement to be decreased in hip pathology. I would then stress the joint passively. We would then assess external rotation. Bring the foot in. This is normally about 45 degrees. We would now assess abduction and adduction. First, create some room by moving the other leg over. In this way, I would not have to cross the right leg over during adduction as this would introduce flexion of the right hip. Place your hand on the opposite side to stabilize the pelvis. Can you bring your leg out? This is abduction and normally about 45 degrees. Bring your leg in. This is adduction and normally about 30 degrees from the midline. You should also stress the joint passively at the end of each of these movements. Hip extension is best done with a patient lying prone and the knee extended to slacken the rectus femoris. Place your hand over the lower back to stabilize the pelvis. Can you bring your right leg off the bed? This is hip extension and normally about 20 degrees. Again, you can apply additional pressure to stress the joint passively. We will now move on to power assessment. This is best done by resisted isometric testing. Get the patient to meet your resistance rather than you trying to reach theirs. With the hip flex at 90, we will assess flexion. Don't let me push your leg down. Assess extension. Don't let me push your leg up. You can also assess internal and external rotation with the hip at 90 degrees. Assess internal rotation. Don't let me push your leg in you would notice that I'm stabilizing at the knee. Assess external rotation. Don't let me pull your leg out. Adduction and abduction can be tested with the hip in neutral or slightly abducted position. Assess adduction, adduction. Don't let me push your legs apart. Assess abduction, abduction. Don't let me push your legs together. The main hip flexor is the iliosaurus, which is supplied by L2 and L3. The main hip extensor is the gluteus maximus, supplied by S1, S2 and L5. The main hip abductors are the gluteus medius, supplied by L5, also L4 and S1. The gluteus maximus, supplied by S1 and S2, and the tensor fascia lato. The adductor muscles include the adductor magnus, adductor brevis, adductor longus, pectineus, and gracilis, supplied by L3, L4, L5, and S1. The main external rotators are the piriformis, obturator externus, obturator internus, the gemelli, and the quadratus femoris, supplied by L4, L5, and S1. The main internal rotators are the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fascia lato. These are supplied by L4, L5, and S1. We will now look at special tests. We will begin with Patrick's or Faber's test. This is also known as the figure of four test. Faber stands for flexion, abduction, and external rotation. Place the patient's heel on the knee. To perform the test, place one hand on the opposite hemipelvis and press down on the knee. Strictly speaking, this is a test for sacroiliac joint problems, pain in the lower back, or in the gluteal region is suggestive of sacroiliac joint pathology. However, this test also stresses the hip joint. Pain over the anterior or lateral aspect of the hip may suggest hip joint pathology. 
The next test is the thermos test. This is a test for hip contractile. As explained earlier, the patient may compensate for hip contractile by increasing lumbar lordosis to stand erect. To reveal the contractile, the lordosis must be flattened out. We will now examine for a right hip contractile. Place your hand in the small of the patient's back to feel for the lumbar lordosis flattening out. We will achieve this by having Kim bring her left leg to her chest. I can feel her back pressing against my hand. Look at the right thigh. If the right thigh comes off the bed, this suggests a flexion contractor of the right hip. The next special test is the Obus test. This is a test for a tight iliotibial band. To perform this test, the patient lies on the side. The uppermost leg is abducted with the knee flexed at 90 and extended. The leg is then released. Failure of the knee to touch the bed is a positive obus test for a tight iliotibial band. Let's assess for leg length discrepancy. The first thing to know is how to measure true leg length. To do this, measure from the anterior superior iliac spine. This is the bony prominence on the anterior aspect of the iliac crest. Measure from the anterior superior iliac spine to the medial malleolus. Repeat on the opposite side. A difference of less than one centimeter is normal. If the lengths are different, then there is a true leg length discrepancy. This can be caused by collapse of the femoral head, hip dislocation, femoral neck fracture, or shortening of one of the long bones of the leg. Now, let us check for apparent leg length discrepancy. To do this, measure from the umbilicus to the medial malleolus. Repeat this on the other side. If these are different, but the true leg lengths are the same, then there is an apparent leg length discrepancy. This can be caused by a pelvic tilt, as Kim will demonstrate here, or it can also be caused by abduction or adduction contractors of the hip. Thanks for watching. I truly hope this was useful to you. Please be sure to subscribe. There are lots of other videos, including other physical exams and injection techniques. Thanks and bye for now.